In the previous video, we have seen the architecture of the AVR microcontroller. Uh, we have seen the various components and how they interoperate and how the processor works. Now, in this particular tutorial, we'll be uh, discussing the memory organization in specific. AVR memory, it can be divided into two parts. One is the memory to store code and the other is the memory to store data. And a controller or a processor architecture where code and data are stored separately, it's called, you know, the RISC architecture. I mean, it, although it stands for reduced instruction set computer, what you have in that is you have a separate memory for code and a separate memory for data. Now, uh, the, the memory that we have for uh, code, it's called the flash as we have seen in the previous uh, video. And uh, what we have for data uh, is data can either be stored in the uh, you know, general purpose registers or you can simply call them as registers or it could be stored in the RAM or if you want to store it permanently there's one more type of memory called the EEPROM so so basically this is the memory organization of the uh, AVR controller so you have a separate memory to store code and a separate memory to store data now uh, in the per this particular tutorial series we will be you know discussing uh, avr mega architecture and the controller that we would be looking specifically is at mega 32 now uh, let us see how much we have on this so uh, we have as the name suggests this is 32 kilobytes of flash on the uh, avr microcontroller then we have uh, in registers again we have two types so uh, these are again divided into uh, general purpose registers gpr or special function registers so there are 32 general purpose registers and 64 special purpose registers and on this particular controller we have memory of 2 kilobytes and the EEPROM on this is 1 kilobyte so as you could see the uh, in terms of memory if you look at the modern controllers this is not much great but it is helpful in a whole lot of applications and that is why uh, in fact you're listening to the tutorials you want to go and build something with these controllers all right so let's go ahead and look at the uh, flash memory and its organization first now what you have in uh, flash memory is it is it is just a chunk of a large memory so it is usually divided into two sections okay so and if this is the you know uh, we could take either this as the zero at location or this as the zero at location so we'll go with the uh, the top location is the zeroth location so and one more thing is uh, if you have seen the hexadecimal notation you would uh, see it written as 0x 0 0, 0, 0, 0. so what it means is uh, the 0x stands for hexadecimal and the number that follows is a hexadecimal number so what do you basically have is if this is the first location the memory is usually divided into two sections the uh, first section of the flash memory uh, this it's used for application code or whatever code uh, that we write for the controller and the second uh, section it it is uh, reserved for the bootloader now if we uh, and before you go ahead and discuss what a bootloader is if you do not want uh, this particular bootloader you can use 
the entire memory now uh, hank said that the bootloader uh, it is i mean uh, to program this particular memory we use a protocol called spi or serial peripheral interface and if we do not want to program the memory with that particular interface and if you want to program the memory with the help of uh, say uh, uart or uh, you know the other protocol serial protocol i2c or even if you want to program it over ethernet so uh, all these uh, can be used to program the flash of the microcontroller and the code that is written uh, you know to uh, take the data from all these sources and put it in the flash it's called the bootloader okay so uh, this is the bootloader section that you have on the controllers so you could uh, if you're using a direct uh, programmer which uh, flashes a hex file directly into the flash you need not worry about the bootloader section however if you do not want to use a bootloader or say you have a, a usb to serial converter and you want to program the controller with the help of that then uh, we need to store a bootloader in the memory so uh, this is a little advanced uh, topic on how to program a bootloader so we'd rather skip it for now and then we'll come back and see yeah the later in the series now so let us look at the flash organization of the uh, 80 mega 32 so what we have is the the flash that we have here it's it's organized into you know uh, chunks of two bytes so in the first video you should have heard me saying that this is an 8-bit controller yes of course the controller is 8-bit all the data processing happens as chunk of 8 bits but the memory the flash memory where we store the actual code it's arranged as two bytes for each location or in other words it is called word addressable so what that basically means is say if the starting location of the say the starting location of the controller if it is uh, so say this is the starting location so what do we have here is so uh, say this is the bit 0 so you can store 16 bits into one location so what that effectively means is for a for a at mega 32 for example it is 32 kilobytes of memory and each location stores two bytes so the addresses if they start from zero as the first address the last address would be 32 k divided by 2 which is 16 k which is 16 into 1024 now that uh, that would be you know if you started in hexadecimal this is 0x0000 the last location on the memory would be 0x3ff f now uh, so so this is how the memory in the avr is organized so uh, whenever we look into the bootloader section we'll see uh, the detail addressing as to what amount of space is allocated for the bootloader and how to do it with fuse bits we'll see it in the uh, later video so similarly uh, for a different controller like say for 80 mega 8 which is you know so this is our 80 mega 32 so this is 80 mega 32 so for say for example 80 mega 8 so what we have in here is so the starting location for this would be again 000, zero, zero. So, so this say this is at 80 mega 8 so the first location and the address would be again all zeros but the last address would be 0 f f f so this is 4 
k in uh, hexadecimal so 4 into 1024 uh, is this in hex now uh, so basically so the 8k is divided uh, by 2 for the lowest last address because uh, the avr architecture specifies that two bytes are stored in one memory location now let us go ahead and look, look at the other memory now what we have discussed is the flash memory and now we'll go ahead and discuss uh, the data memory now as we have said before uh, the temporary storage uh, resistors they are again of two types the general purpose resistors and then there are specific sp specific or special function resistors and a specific special function resistors uh, you might wonder as to what they are used for so these are all the resistors that we will be using in our code uh, so say the controller has a timer unit or a UART unit or the input output ports all these ports will have special function resistors and all of these uh, will be used in the uh, programs so these are special function resistors and the general purpose resistors if you're writing it in uh, assembly uh, or you know if you write it in C whatever uh, variables you declare that either get stored in the general purpose resistors which are 32 or the RAM which is 2 kilobytes and we have seen in the previous video that you know uh, the the general purpose resistors they are input to the ALU so uh, the ALU takes data from general either the general purpose resistors or the 8-bit data bus so okay so let's go ahead and look at the data memory now uh, contrary to what we had in the program memory the data memory is uh, simply arranged as 8 bits so it is not 16 bit per location it's just 8 bit per location now what we have is at the starting it's like say this is our data memory for the 80 mega 32 so so uh, all this is mapped in a sequence so what we have first is the resistors and the general purpose resistors which start from R0 and end at R31 so these are the general purpose resistors so the location I would rather write it in decimal this time so this would be uh, 0 to 31 so these are the locations now after we have the general purpose resistors what we have is a special function resistors so the special function resistors they could be uh, anything they could be port resistors to access the port or they could be any other resistors uh, like for the like for the timers or for the uh, serial communication and their addresses the start from 32 so there are total 64 uh, common resistors so if i add 64 to 31 uh, so it would be 95 so that's what we have on uh, on on the on the uh, this thing so this we have what we have on top is these are general purpose resistors and and these are uh, special function resistors now after the uh, special function resistors what we have is uh, from here uh, from the location 96 for the 8 mega, 80, uh, 80 mega 32 from here we have 2 kilobytes of RAM so if we add 2048296 what we arrive at as 2143 so this is the RAM now uh, say a controller has like say, more than one UART or you know more than two timers so all the additional uh, you know resistors special function resistors that are required by the controller they are mapped after the RAM so from 2144 to and that happens only if the controller has uh, you know the additional uh, resistors now this would end at the additional memory address would end at 
65535 now uh, let us look at and look at this one more time so uh, what we have in the starting of the data memory is the general purpose resistors so these uh, go from r0 to r31 and after that what we have is uh, chunk of special function resistors so these are 64 special function resistors on all the avr microcontrollers and if we need any additional uh, resistors these are mapped on the uh, locations after the ram and also remember that the ram that we have on this is variable so at mega 32 has uh, just two kilobytes of ram if you if you take it uh, say a different controller it might have 4k or 1 kilobytes of ram so depending on how much ram we have if there are additional spe special function resistors these are mapped after the ram memory ends so so these are the locations so if you want to write them in uh, say hex so this would be as you could see in the data, data sheets so the starting location would be 0x000 the last location so 31 in hex would be 0x001f and then the next location would start at 0x0020 and uh, the sfr or the special function resistors they would end at 0x05f so there are 64 special function resistors in any of the avr controllers and then we have uh, the a RAM which starts at 0x60 and ends uh, at I mean if you add uh, 2048 in hex it ends at that address so uh, let us look at again just a brief review of what these do so what we have in data memory is the general purpose resistors the special function resistors and the two kilobytes of RAM and then we have extra space uh, to allocate for any special function resistors by the way for 80 mega 32 we do not have any additional resistors so we only have 16 special function resistors now this is all about the uh, memories so we have flash and i mean the code and the data memory and uh, yeah so by the way there is again uh, eprom memory where you can store the data permanently and that is one kilobytes and it is uh, it is again arranged as 8, 8 bits per location so it would be pretty simple so the location should start from 0x000 and it end at 1024 right so this is pretty simple so these are two chunks of memory that you find on the avr controller so uh, knowing this you would know when you declare your variables where they go and, and get stored so they would either go to your resistors or the ram and if you want to store something permanently uh, in real time you would be using the eprom memory and all the code that you write for the controller goes and stays in the flash memory so this is uh, all uh, about the memory and uh, in the later videos uh, so uh, what we could go ahead and discuss is uh, the bootloader section of the uh, flash and how it is configured with the fuse bits and all of that so thank you for watching in the next video we will be uh, looking uh, at a you know concrete example on how to um, write a code how to set up the tools and probably we will be doing first example thank you for watching